Are you one of the many Americans looking to move to Texas? If you said yes, chances are you're coming from California, you have a little money to spend, and you'll be looking for a great place to live. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs. In the past, we've talked about cheap places to live, safe places to live, places you don't want to live in the Lone Star State, but we've never really looked at the best places. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the best cities statistically to live in Texas. Now I emphasize statistically because locals have opinions and we'll disagree with some of the cities on this list, think other ones should have been in there. It's gonna go back and forth in the comment section. Thing is this, everyone's opinion is different. Example, I grew up in a place called West Torrance. It's an upper middle class neighborhood in Southern California. There's a town not too far away from there called Gardena. Coming from where I grew up, in my opinion, Gardena isn't the best place to live, and I probably wouldn't move there. If you were living in, let's say, South Central LA or Compton, your opinion is Gardena's a great place to live. See, opinions vary, numbers don't. We get that all the time. Statistics don't tell the whole story. Yeah, stop typing, either do opinions. These cities wouldn't fall under any category that includes the words cheap, affordable, or inexpensive. So let's just assume these places are expensive places to live and we won't have to go over the cost of living in this video. We're gonna look at all the other good things. These are really nice places, and if they were really nice and affordable, there would be a line down the street looking to get in on it. Sort of like Ben and Jerry's on free ice cream day. Never understood that. Everyone lines up for like 45 minutes to get a dollar's worth the ice cream. How much is your time worth? Never understood that at all. These are the best cities to live in, statistically, in Texas. Let's take a look. Number 10, New Braunfels, Texas. New Braunfels is a city of almost 70,000 residents just north of San Antonio, and it's a great place to raise a family. It has good schools, nice parks, and one of the best water parks in the country called Schlitterbahn. Yes, Schlitterbahn. They got this whole German thing going on here. Now, when I say German thing, I mean like they've named things with German names and some of the buildings have that architecture. They're not like starting wars with other cities in the neighborhood, things like that. The crime rate here is 11% lower than the national average. Their high school graduation rate is 86%, which is 3% higher than the national average. The median home price here they say is 177,000, but realistically you're looking at about 300,000 to get something nice. Now they go way up from there, but you can get a house for about 600,000 that in nicer parts of LA would go for 2 million easy. The poverty level in New Braunfels is 37% lower than the national average. This is a great place to live. Number nine, North Richland Hills, Texas, or NRH as they call it here, is a city in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, northeast of downtown Fort Worth. They have a little over 70,000 residents here living the good life. This is one of those places that it's hard to find an overgrown lawn or broken down car in front of the house. It's a nice place to live and it, it shows. The crime rate here is 20% lower than the national average and as far as high school graduation, it's 88% which is 6% higher than the national average. The median home price is about $160,000. As we've discussed in other videos, that's just a number real estate agents look at. Median home price doesn't really mean anything to the average Joe. So I'm here to tell you that realistically, if you want a decent house here, you're looking at 380,000 on up. Now, if you're in Jackson, Mississippi, that is an astronomical amount of money and why would anyone pay that much for a house? But if you're from Los Angeles or San Francisco or New York City, you're thinking that's damn right reasonable right there, 380 for a nice house. The poverty level in NRH is 49% lower than the national average. Number eight, Pflugerville, Texas. It's spelled with a P, so just in case you're looking for it, it's P-F-L-U-G-E-R-V-I-L-L-E. Pflugerville, like so many other Texas cities, is a great place for families. They have great schools, a lake, a water park, go-kart tracks, a Target, in case your wife is like my wife and sees roaming the aisles of Target as some form of therapy. Yeah, they got one too, and a Costco in case you need it. Pflugerville is just north of Austin, far enough away not to have some of their weirdness rubbing off on the city. The crime here is 46% lower than the national average. The high school graduation rate is 89%, which is 7% better than the national average. Currently, Pflugerville has a little over 65,000 residents, and that's probably gonna grow pretty quick because they got a lot of new construction going on here. 
If you're looking to buy a new home, they've got some that are as low as $260,000. But realistically, if you want something nice, you're going to be looking at over $320 on up. The really nice ones start off around $450. Now, they say the median home value here is about $180,000. That's not realistic, as we've all learned. Realistically, you're looking at $280 on up. The poverty rate in Pflugerville is 54% lower than the national average. Number seven, McKinney, Texas. McKinney, Texas is the northernmost city, I guess you could say, in the Dallas metro area. Right after that, there's a couple small towns and a lot of farmland and wooded areas. Broken down tractors, trucks, and dudes named Jed. McKinney, Texas has been around since the mid-1800s and has a great historic downtown area with a lot of older buildings that have been going through like a rebirth thing over the last decade or so. McKinney is growing. In 2010, they had about 130,000 residents. Right now, they're sitting on about 200,000. The crime rate is 54% lower than the national average. The graduation rate is 90% and the median home price is 200,000. But realistically, you're not going to find much under 400,000 and it goes way up. There's one that's like $4 million and it was a mansion with, it was just beautiful. The poverty level in McKinney, Texas is 54% lower than the national average. This is a great place to live and we're only at number seven. Number six, Rockwall, Texas. Rockwall is another city in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. It is on the eastern shore of Lake Ray Hubbard, which is on the east side of Dallas. This is another one of those places where it's hard to find an unkept lawn. The reason I always bring up maintained lawns and stuff like that is it's a good sign that a neighborhood, city, or town is a good place to live. Because if they have well-maintained yards, you have people that can either A, afford a gardener, or B, they take care of it themselves. They have enough pride in their home and their neighborhood that they're going to make sure their lawns and gardening are taken care of. It's one of the first signs that you've got poverty and unemployment problems in a neighborhood or a town. Everyone's lawn starts going bad. Rockwall has nice lawns. They also have a crime rate that's 31% lower than the national average and a graduation rate of 90%. 90% of their students graduate with a high school diploma. There are places in this country where it's like 62%. The median home price in Rockwall is 200,000, but realistically, you're looking at four to 500,000 and up, way up, if you wanna get a good place. They got a lake right there. It's gonna be expensive. The poverty rate in Rockwall is 54% lower than the national average. Number five, Pearland, Texas. Pearland is a city on the south side of the Houston metro area. I've been to Pearland. It's been years, but it was nice then. And from a statistical standpoint, looks like it got better. It's a great place to live. You're only about an hour or so from Galveston in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's great for something to do. This one's a little bit cheaper than the rest of the list. The median home price here is $194,000. But realistically, you can get a decent home for as low as $230,000, $240,000. But most are going for $350,000 to $450,000. Somewhere in that area. Of course, they go up. The crime rate here is 30% lower than the national average, and the graduation rate is 91%. That's solid. The poverty level in Pearland is 70% lower than the national average. This is a great place to live. The humidity can get up there, but it's still a great place to live. Number four, League City, Texas. Right down the road from Pearland, you have League City. Now, this is a perfect example of what I was saying that everyone has their own opinions. Statistically, League City is great. I know two people from League City. That's actually the reason I was in Pearland. And they both think it's great. And then I know another person that said League City is just horrible, crime infested, which isn't true, but that's his opinion. I don't know if he ever got his car broke into or something like that, but he thinks League City is horrible. It's not. And he's a local. He's from there, born and raised. The other two moved there in the 90s. So, yeah, might as well be born and raised. They've been there long enough. League City has a population of just over 100,000 residents. And this is a great place to live. It's a little bit closer to the Gulf and Galveston and all that stuff. Remember how I said that one guy thinks it's crime infested hellhole? The crime rate here is actually 41% lower than the national average, which is a solid number. Their violent crime rate, we'll go in a little deeper since that one clown said it was this horrible place. Their violent crime rate is 71% lower than the national average and their property crime is actually 36% lower. So all around, it's just a safer place 
The graduation rate here is 92%, so they're getting them out of school, and the median home value here is $202,000. But to buy something decent, you're gonna wanna start off looking around 300,000 on up. And they do have a lot of good looking places for about $329,000. The poverty rate in League City is 65% lower than the national average. Number three, Frisco, Texas. Back up to the Dallas metro area, we have the city of Frisco, Texas, which is often confused with San Francisco, California. Just kidding, nobody would ever confuse these two cities. Maybe Helen Keller. Frisco is just west of McKinney, Texas, from earlier in the video. Frisco has just over 200,000 residents and four golf courses. Oh, and McKinney, right next door, has three more. They have like seven golf courses in this little area. Frisco is a great place for families and golfers, apparently. The crime rate here is 50% lower than the national average. The graduation rate is 95%, so bravo to them. So buckle up for the home prices. The median home value here is 300,000. That's the harshest on the list so far. The reality is you're gonna have a hard time finding anything decent under $420,000 and they go up. They've got some really nice homes which are going for like $750,000, $850,000. The poverty level in Frisco is 75% lower than the national average. Number two, Keller, Texas. Now it's getting good. These are really nice. The last two are great. Staying in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, we have Keller, which is north of downtown Fort Worth. There's a place here called Roscoe's Smokehouse. If you ever get a chance, it's totally worth it. It's also worth it to move here. You're far enough away from the city, so the traffic's not gonna be crazy, and it's not too crowded. But you're still close enough to where if you wanted to head into Dallas or Fort Worth or Arlington, it's all right there. The only one thing I will say about this is this is is one of the only places I've been to on this list where I actually found a couple houses that had overrun lawns and stuff like that. And I think these are just houses that, you know, they were handed down in the family. So whoever lived there didn't have the money to take care of it, but everything else was great in the neighborhoods. The crime rate in Keller, Texas is 70% lower than the national average. And the graduation rate is 94%. That is solid. Now here's where it gets good. The median home value here is 311,000, but realistically you're looking at at least 520,000 on up and way up it goes. The poverty level in Keller is 75% lower than the national average. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we got another channel called On This Day. Check it out, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you can. All right, on to number one. And number one, Allen, Texas. Allen, Texas is a city of just about 100,000 residents and it completes the Texas triad of places to live. McKinney, Frisco, and Allen all border each other. And not to be outdone, Allen has four golf courses of its own and stop typing. Not all are public golf courses, I get it. Some are private and some you have to belong to a country club or something like that. That doesn't mean these golf courses don't exist. They are there. Allen is number one because it has great stats and it's probably the best place for families on this list. This is one of those cities in Texas that has a high school football stadium that's bigger than some college stadiums. Not even kidding. Look at it from the map. Along with great parks and sports centers. Tons of stuff for kids to do. And they really push the sports. If you look at who's from Allen, Texas on Wikipedia, it is just filled with NFL stars, Major League Baseball stars, all kinds of people like that. The crime rate in Allen, Texas is 55% lower than the national average. The graduation rate is 95%. And the median home value is 234,000. But realistically, you're looking at about 320,000 for something decent on up. And it goes way up. They got a lot of things that are going for like 600,000, 700,000, 824,000. It gets up there. The poverty rate in Allen, Texas is 66% lower than the national average. All right, that's today's list. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.